One of the things that's happened during this lockdown, whether it's a regional or national or local lockdowns uh, because of COVID, is that analysts have had to work from home. Okay, now whether that's you know in home in your bedroom in your dining room or even in a cafe if, if it's if they're open, you know you don't have to be in the office to do your work. And a lot of analysts are finding that they can actually work as be as well, if not better, working remotely. Now analysts have a lot of analysts have always been working remotely, and you know they they found that it works really well for them. But more have now had to work remotely because of these, like I said, these local. Lo Lo, um, national uh, or global lockdown because of COVID and they're realizing actually that they don't want to go back into the office full time. They might want to go back one or two days a week just to sort of you know get that social element of it but they're actually quite happy working remotely and actually they find it works well for them remotely. Now as an employer I, you know it's it's awakened a lot of them to the realization that they don't need the analyst physically in the office. They can actually still get a lot of the work done as long as there are communication tools like Slack or Teams that they can communicate via and have meetings when they need to that actually the analyst can be remote. Now this provides a really good opportunity for freelance data analysts who are remote, okay, because historically if you're a freelance data analyst you had to be in the country in which you were doing the work, okay, because you had to turn up to the office uh, or whatever. But actually because businesses are now used to, especially analytical managers are now used to working with teams remotely and they're actually finding it um, quite easy or you know not as difficult as they thought it they would, what does this mean for analysts who are not in the country um, that, that the company is in. I'm mainly speaking about you sort of analysts in Asia, for example, in India or Bangladesh or uh, Pakistan or, or those kind of, or even Indonesia, who want to work for European or American companies. I think the opportunity now has become easier because you don't, you know, because people are now used to working remote or used to working with analysts remotely, it doesn't matter what country you're in. In fact, you know, when I um, had to manage my team and I've managed a lot of teams, I've had analysts working remotely from Indonesia, from India, and I found it to work. And now other, and sort of, like I said, analytics managers are realizing that it works for them. So if you're a freelance data analyst, okay, and you are based in Asia somewhere, for example, and you want to work for a European company or for a, uh, an American company, what are the things that you need to do to make sure that you, you know, uh, an employer will, will hire you. The first thing you need to do is make sure the employer can find you, okay? Now, historically, you know, because remote work, um, if you're in another country, you couldn't really work for a foreign company if they were based in the UK, unless they had a local office. So it's very rare. So it usually used to be that freelance analysts would work from recommendation or they'd be on Fiverr or Upwork or one of these websites like Elancer where people who wanted remote would find them, but they weren't usually big companies. Big companies never looked on those places. Um, they, they, they would typically hire within their own country or um, they would have an office offshore and then they would that subsidiary would hire. Um, and freelance data analysts would usually go through these, you know, uh, websites and it will usually be small independent sort of companies who needed uh, access to um, remote or um, you know freelance data res data analytical uh, resources that they would use those websites okay so now you need to get noticed to these bigger companies now obviously the, use the main platforms like LinkedIn okay because you need to be promoted and you don't just put your profile up there and stop you need to promote the work you're doing okay so once a week post about the kind of stuff that you do obviously don't talk about anything confidential but you might want to talk about you know this week I've just built a churn model for a, a client um, you know you know and th these are my skills and this is what I found you know and keep it generic okay but the idea is that people who may be looking for data analysts see you and they're, they're more likely to connect with you. The next thing is actually to reach out to them so what you may find is that because managers are now open to remote working okay or remote workers okay is to contact them directly now rather than randomly just scattergun and, and, and look for everyone look for people who are hiring in their native country. So if they're in the UK, for example, like myself, and I'm hiring, I'm hiring for roles. And if I was hiring, I'd be hiring for roles in the UK. Okay, look for those, because if they're struggling, and actually in Europe and in, in America, there is actually a shortage of sort of analytical resources, reach out to them and say, look, I know you're hiring and you probably expect them to be in the UK or in America, in the US, um, but I'm based in India or I'm based you know, elsewhere in Indonesia or Malaysia, whatever it is, um, but I have these skill sets and I'm sure I could do this job for you and what you've got to do is reassure them that you have worked for foreign companies before or you know how to work with foreign companies so talk about things like you appreciate the time zone you appreciate that payments you know you will bill it in the local currency and therefore you will take the risk of fluctuation usually it doesn't fluctuate that much currencies don't really go really uh, up and down especially if you're going to be invoicing uh, monthly or even fortnightly they're not going to move that much so you just got to take a bit of hit on country for currency fluctuations you might benefit sometimes you might not benefit sometimes but try and say look I'll invoice in the local currency um, and try and 
explain to them how the process works, okay? And then what will happen is that as, as a local manager, they will go to their you know, uh, finance team and say, look, if I was to hire someone remotely, what would the process be? Uh, and typically it is exactly the same as any supply. You just need to supply an invoice and they'll pay the invoice and you need to have a bank account in your name uh, in a country and they'll make those payments. Now, like I said, you just need to make it easier for them. You need to explain to them, look, if you were to hire me, this is how it would work. Uh, show them that you understand how it works to be remote and, and show them that, you know, even with your time zone differences, if you're in Asia, you'd work later, uh, start later, work later to match their time zone, or even a, what, what the benefit is, because if you started earlier than anything they give you in the off, their afternoon, you would pick it up your morning and you would have it ready for them before they came into the office. And that's one of the things that I found uh, when I manage teams, especially in India, is that if I gave them a lot of instructions over, uh, on the, in the afternoon, they'd pick it up first thing in the morning. And before I got into the office, they'd have most of that work done, or they'd have at least questions uh, about the work that I could answer first thing and they would have the rest of the day uh, to finish it off. Well, I hope you found that video useful. If you have any comments, please put it down in the comment section below. Please do like the video. Please share it with your friends and colleagues. And of course, please do subscribe to my channel. Thank you.